welcome back to uh, a new era with Arsenal slash rebuilding the Invincibles and we're in season 3 episode 2 now on Football Manager 2019 and last time out we had the sort of random episode which was just the transfer centre update and everything that's going on, the ins, the outs, all that good stuff, uh, no live com or no com uh, anyway but we have got that today, we've got Millwall, um, I skipped United, I skipped Liverpool um, I just want this se this season to run a bit more quicker than season two did. Uh, that went on for probably far too many episodes. Um, I want to trim that down a little bit. Um, I've probably talked about it a little bit in some of my Carl Shorten videos up to now before because this Arsenal save is very much further ahead than the Carl Shorten save. Um, probably about two, three weeks. So I've probably talked about it a little bit in there. I may have even released a video already that I was talking about in there. I'm not too sure. Um, but yeah, the Arsenal save... I want to wrap up as soon as this season as soon as possible as well. Uh, a little bit like the Cole Shorten one. Um, again, if it hasn't become clear, it will do very soon. Why? There's a few things that are going to be changing and a few things happening. Um, but yeah, I don't want it to run as long. Plus, I thought Mill will be an interesting pick. It's a new team in Premier League history. And if I'd have done Man United and Liverpool for Liverpool, um, both those games have been a bit close to Mill to justify to keeping in fact that we want to try and, you know, not speed through this season, but make a bit faster progress. Um, and not dwell on certain games just because they're there. You know, last season I, I think I played United, all the big teams, probably twice on on comms just because they were there. I could whack them in the SEO and stuff. A little bit of a cheat, but um, I'm not going to do that this time. But they are still managed by Neil Harris, uh, which is interesting to see. They do have Joe Willock on loan. Obviously can't play today because he's our he's our player. He's done all right in the three games he's played so far. It's good to see him getting some Premier League football. Um, but without further ado, you saw the league table here. We are currently top. Chelsea do have a game in hand, uh, so they can catch us. We do have a game in hand in Man United, so we've got a little bit of gap there. And Man City have closed, closed in as well. They're now third. Tottenham and Liverpool languishing down here a little bit, but no real surprises anywhere else. Apart from the fact Millwall aren't in the bottom places. They are doing okay. Two wins. Is it? No, one win and three draws from their seven games so far. So doing okay. Doing okay. If they keep that up, I'm sure they'll be fine. But let's see how we've got on in the season so far. So, as you can see, we do have an unbeaten record. So, we are still the Invincibles. We've done better than last season when we lost the first game against Southampton, I think it was. We've done better than that this season. Not much better in the first game. We're away to Burnley. Our team, obviously, I think they were the last game of last season. And they stopped us winning the title, essentially. Uh, so, But it was still a team that was still grounding in. So, we were still trying to work out what we were trying to do trying to work out what we were doing that sort of stuff you know a lot of new faces a lot of new players trying to figure out who's the starting 11 that sort of stuff we didn't we probably were lucky to get a draw in this game we were lucky not to lose the first game in the last seat of this first season as well but we held on i mean they didn't really trouble us i suppose a lot of shots but not a lot come from them nothing escalante escalated uh fellaini's in there as well i mean they haven't from what i can tell they haven't improved their team that much so, doing very well. And is it is it still Sean Dyche? I think it was. I think I checked it at the time. It is still Sean Dyche. He's still he's still doing very well. And he, yeah, he, he hampered us. But we got straight back on track. Uh, home to Aston Villa. 4-0 win. So the new system has taken place shape as well a little bit. So we've gone from the attacking midfielder last season to a four, flat 4-4-2. Four, four, two. two strikers. Gomez coming in very nicely in this game. Getting his first two goals to the club. Two minutes in and 24 sandwiching a goal by Aubameyang before Mkhitaryan rounded it off before half time we couldn't add another one anymore unfortunately in the second half they I guess tightened up just trying to save embarrassment didn't give anything going forward and we were unlucky not to win more but more than four but 4-0 is still a great result in the Premier League regardless of who you're playing especially in the situation like I say still grounding everyone in Kazawa come back into the set I think Klasenac played the first game wasn't great Kazawa coming for this one did much better got man of the match and very good ratings. Um, we then went away to Huddersfield, 2-1 game here. Uh, we went 1-0 down in this game to Sobby uh, on 12 minutes. I was thinking, oh, okay, so it seems to be a way that we struggled this season. And to be fair, they had a lot of shots, a lot of chances, but Aubameyang grabbed, one, grabbed two goals again, 16 and 31 minutes, and again, not much else happened. Tight, tight win, still a work in progress. Happy just to get the three points on the board at this stage. Then came the big test, Man United, last season champions, the team that gazumped us in the league. We took an early lead, well early-ish, for these sort of games. 25 minutes, Aubameyang again, he's thriving in this new system. Um, 
and we actually changed the system up a little bit in this game. I changed the centre midfielder to a box to box uh, just to give us a bit more going forward and obviously with Sancho cutting in from the left I felt that the, the him and the centre midfielder were getting in each other's way a little bit so I wanted the box to box to bomb forward a bit more and I also moved Diawara across from the Vieira role which would become that box to box midfielder into the more Gilberto Silva kind of deep line playmaker, I mean he's not a playing deep line playmaker but that kind of deep infielder defending midfielder so I moved him there and I also set the left back to overlap. Ashley Cole used to do that with great effect uh, that's what we're looking for again so we've got Kazawa just bombing up and down and he's playing very well for it uh, but we took the lead like I say through Aubameyang uh, we then got another one uh, through Mkhitaryan against Zell Club just before half time they did have their left back sent off I think it's 50 minutes uh, the, the writing's really hard to read on this screen uh, before Mkhitaryan had another one in 82 minutes and again they had a lot of shots ish but none on target they never really troubled us we were we were dominant in this game, and we again we probably could have had a couple more, but a three 0 win at home to United really put a marker down for the season. Especially when I thought we were looking a little bit ropey in the first couple of games, a little tweak in the system worked a treat. Especially against United, and especially when they went down to ten men, it it I mean that wasn't the defining part of the game, but it certainly helped. Uh, we then went away to Wolves, who were about eighth or ninth in the table, so having a very good season. Uh, we took the lead through Gomez again, getting another goal, thirty four minutes before Connor Cody just sealed it on this 6-6 minute with an own goal. We weren't vintage in this game again, but it was enough to, to get us by. Uh, we then had Krasnodar in the Champions League, uh, which this is an interesting one. No, we didn't have Krasnodar next. We had the draw next. Um, we also drew, we drew Man United in the League Cup third round, so a great home draw there. That's absolutely fantastic. Note the sarcasm. Uh, then we had the Champions League draw. We were in pot two. Krasnodar were in pot one. But somehow we get very, very lucky and draw the Krasnodar group uh, along with Persictus and Club Bruges, as you can probably see a little bit down here. Maybe, maybe not yet, yeah, Persictus and Club Bruges. Uh, but there were some very, very tough groups. If we go to uh, stages, and we want to go to here, all groups. Uh, if you just have a quick scout, some of the groups, some of them are very tough. So Roma, Chelsea, and Monaco in a group. Barcelona, Man United, and Milan in a group. So they've already played. Oh, yeah, we've already played Krasnodar. What am I thinking? Uh, so if we played one, we'll come to that in a minute. Uh, then you've got Atletico Madrid, PSG, Schalke, Spartak, Moscow aren't an easy thing either. Uh, Benfica, Bayern, and Ajax. Porto, Liverpool, and Inter. Silva Vigo again aren't going to be pushovers. We probably got an easy group in comparison when you look at it. And you've got Real Madrid, Celtic. That's not a bad group for Real Madrid, uh, really. And you've got, again, oh, Juventus lost their opening game. Okay, they lost 1-0 to Dortmund. Okay, against Dortmund. That's not too surprising. Dortmund are very good as well. So th those two are pretty much set. But yeah, we we got a, we lucked out really. Um, but we'll get to that game in a minute. We first of all then had a 2-1 win at home to Brighton. 1-0 um, down in this game through Percy Tao. No idea who he is. But we regrouped. Aubameyang gave us the equaliser on 53 minutes. And to be honest, it was coming. We should have been scoring before they scored. We just couldn't break them down. We finally got that first goal, and as soon as we got that first one, we got the second one. It was a penalty, 2-1 at Bamiyang, and he, like I say, he's thriving this season. If we look at his stats, uh, he is already on eight goals in seven games. He's pretty close to some of his seasons with us already, and his average rating is just skyrocketed as well. So he's enjoying this new way we're playing, and that's good to see. That's what That was a big part of what we wanted to do, is get him fully functioning in this team you know to, to devastating effect the Henri kind of role he's scoring loads of goals and that's what he's doing this season absolutely um, this game there this came after the international break so we had about two uh, gap between games and we had a lot a lot of injuries in this team luckily not too many of them to the first team Victorian was one of them I think but a lot of them were sort of fringe players who so I was thinking for the Krasnodar game about dropping in but obviously we had to have a little change up but we went into a resounding lead in this game Aubameyang on 15 minutes Sancho made it 2-0 on 36 and then Aubameyang 3-0 on 57 and I was thinking ah nice and easy nice and coast I don't think we've made a change at this point we made one which was enforced Torreira picked up a bit of a knock I think but they came back 3-1 uh, Kerol Nanetti I don't know who he is I saw him through the game and wondered who he was but I never looked at him Polish centre midfielder don't know much about him to be honest uh, and then Goncalo Gonzalo I think that is even with the C Guedes on 87 minutes just to make it a bit more respectful for them but really 
3-2 was very flattering to them. We were absolutely dominant for the first 70 odd minutes. It was just that last 20 that we took off the ball a little bit and let them back in the game. Um, and then we have finally had the group game against Krasnodar, which was a complete rotation in this game. Well, where, where possible. We had a lot of injuries, like I mentioned. Um, and it was to get some of those in, the rest of you players, but also to give a few of the fringe players, who, some of whom were starting to moan a little bit about game time. One of them was Ramsey, who's actually injured, who would have played, but unfortunately couldn't. Um, we took a lead 1 0. William Goebbels getting, the, getting his first goal in five minutes. Uh, 2 0. Penalty, Mohamed El Neni on 11 minutes. Nice and cruising. Will Goebbels got his second goal on 89 minutes. Back from injury, back in the goals, got his first couple of goals for the team. Absolutely delighted to see that. And absolutely dominated this game. 27 shots, 10 on target. Could have done better with more on target, but. It, it, we, we did what was needed and these are the team if you look at some of their players as well they've got Valon Barami Kabori I think he's played for Watford is it him? no it can't be him I think I've had his card I think I must have had his card on FIFA I recognise the name Pereira I'm not is that the guy who Uruguayan? oh he's Russian he, he is Uruguayan he's just got a Russian Abel Hernandez who played for Hull Labiad I think the Dutch guy is it or he's Moroccan but he played for like PSV or Final or someone PSV, yeah. Played for Fulham, didn't realise that. Um, it's not still Ian Petrov. Uh, we've got Vachetti, I think, played for Spartak Moscow, the Italian guy, isn't it? Is it Spartak Moscow you played for for a while? He did, yeah. Um, quite a few names in this team. Kaka played for Watford. Castanos, he's the Dutch striker, played for. Was it? No, he's Lisbon, wasn't it, I think? Yeah, he's gone there very cheaply, but he's. Yeah, he's not very good. <laughs> Luke Kostanyov. Yeah, it's a very good win. But more names in their team than I thought there was going to be. Um, I'm not sure how they got into pot one, but they did. Uh, that leaves us here to today. We've got Millwall. Uh, we've got a lot of cup games left this month. So I don't know where we're coming for next time. Um, possibly down here. Chelsea, Man City sort of range, I guess. But we'll get onto that maybe at the end of the episode. We'll jump into the lineups for the Millwall game right now. So here are the lineups. We're going with Abamyang up top with uh, is it Mario Gomez. I'm not too sure. Can't remember his first name. Uh, Sancho at left midfield. Torreira, Diawara in mid set midfield, and Iwobi on the right for Mkhitaryan, who's still injured. And a little point that comes to this: I didn't have any other real right midfielders that could play that role. I had one who I wanted to bring back. It was Darren Rogers. He's come through our. I'm going to call him Captain. Maybe not Captain America because he's English, but maybe maybe Cap 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 Rogers because. He is 6'17", I think, came through our youth team, and he's worth £9 million already. I tried. He's on loan at Sunderland, and they're not really playing him, so I've had a little word with him. They said they're going to play him more, but as soon as Mkhitaryan got injured, right, right, I'm bringing him back. He's going to get a good... Mkhitaryan's out for about seven weeks, I think. It's like he's going to have a good run. Bring him back. He had a can-be-recalled clause in his contract. Unfortunately, he just wouldn't let me bring him back. Same with Reese Nelson, same with Smith-Rowe. All got recall clauses in their contracts but it wouldn't let me bring them back I did put the cl uh, question out to Twitter uh, so this is going back a couple of weeks now um, I, I apologise in one of my cost shortened videos this is a few weeks ahead still f feeling quite rough a bit of a sore throat all that so anything that comes out I apologise um, yeah I put it out to Twitter and apparently they, they said it had only happened during a transfer window we were still in a transfer window because I when that I couldn't recall them I was very close to signing Carlos Soler from Valencia for 30 million pounds uh, unfortunately his work permit went just over the window so I missed him but at the same time I'm thinking well we've got a way we can, can cover on the right hand side but also I want Rogers to come back in when he's you know when he's back and can come back in um, but what I deduced was there's a few people that said it one of whom I know was Sammy Dodar Sammy Dodar Sammy Dodar um, someone who's very big on the Twitter scene uh, big on the foot manager scene and there was someone else, I'm not sure if I follow or whether he just commented, I'm not too sure. I think it was Mike, someone, I apologise, I'm not near my Twitter at the moment. Uh, said, it, apparently, no, the, it was Sammy, I think it was Sammy who, who mentioned this. They both mentioned the wind transfer window, but Sammy mentioned if they've not been away for more than 28 days, that could be a thing where they can't come back, and I, I think that's what it is. If that's what it is, then that's the case. If that's a thing, that's the case. Uh, in terms of the defence, we've got Kozawa, Reese Oxford, Socrates, and Mate Niles, so Bellerin's also out for a prolonged amount of time, and Leno in goal. Uh, they're going with Trusty, we actually looked signing him in the summer. He wasn't quite up to the standard that we were looking for, but for Millwall, that's a very good signing. Um, I mean, he's decent, but when we bring in people like Reese Oxford and whatnot, 
it, yeah, it was a no-brainer. Uh, I don't recognise too many of the other players. Stefan de Four from Burnley, of course. I, is that Joe Bryan? I think he played for Fulham. Yeah, they signed him for Fulham. I only know that because of second year cards Fulham save at the start of Football Manager 19. Uh, Jordan Fitch, is that the guy who played for United as a youngster? No. I remember him from FIFA, actually. Yeah, his, his, his Lazio card. Wasn't very good. Very slow player from what I'm cool on FIFA, anyway. But let's jump into the game. Um, and, I mean, it's a bit past the point now, but if you do know the reason for that work permit, uh, recall and loan, if it is that 28 days thing, drop it in the comments below, because I'd be interested to know. Come By the time I see the comment, it might be the next transfer window, so we'll, we'll know a bit more anyway. But, yeah, drop the comments below. Uh, I don't have any concerns. How do you think... I should have sent the assistant. How do you think it was just three days? Uh, yeah. Whatever. So the kickoff highlight here, which will end in three, two, one, any moment now. Unless it's going to give them a goal very early on. No, it's saved by Leno. Okay, that's more than we normally get, but hey ho. And it's another Millwall uh, highlight to start here with a free kick just inside the centre circle. If we can nick it back, we'll, oh, oh, it's gone to Djordjevic, and he's hit it in off the post. Not the start we were looking for. Not by any stretch of the imagination here. They all gather around him and he didn't need the pace there. We mentioned him possibly being a bit slow. Didn't really need it, but we giving that much space in the edge of the box. And it's another outside the box. Is it another outside the box goal? Uh, it might as well be. It's like a yard inside. Leno probably should do better, but we are 1-0 down. And we have a throw in, but right in our half, right basically on our goal line. Aubameyang, he d Aubameyang even, he does win it. Oh, a great ball out to Sancho. We need some players in the box though. Aubameyang, one all. He is on fire. That's nine in eight now. I think that's in the league. Not mentioned any cup goals he might have, although probably not yet. Because I don't think he didn't play in the Champions League game. I don't think he's played any more cups. But great search out for Sancho. Just drifts inside. Drops it short for Aubameyang. He's got a run as well if he needs him. He doesn't. He finds the bottom corner. One all. Minutes later. And it's another highlight here. It's taken a while. There's not been much happening since the goals. Sancho tries to pick out a great ball, but again, Diawara with a tame header really goes straight back to them. If we can just nick it back here, cause a bit of a counter attack or something. All we do, Torreira nips in, but oh, it's then cleared to Oxford. Sancho, what can he do here? Great ball to Abamyang, he's got Kazawa running on the overlap. Go Bears, and Iwobi. I said Gomez, is it named Gomez? I can't click on him. I think it is. But Abamyang, it's giving him the assist. I thought there was another touch in there. Great cross. It must. Did we not get the shot on Gomez? Did he not get the shot? Was that their defender hitting it back, maybe? The keeper can't hold it, but Iwobi's there to pounce on the rebound. And about time we grab a rebound. I mentioned it a few of the cold short episodes I've recorded tonight. A lot of rebound goals going in against us. Nice to score one. As we go into half time, we've turned it around, 1 0 down. We're going to go in in the lead. We've done that a few times this season as well, actually. We've not always been amazing, but we've shown a bit more grit that maybe the Arsenal team in real life could do with showing a little bit at the moment. You know, the ability to dig in and grind a result out rather than trying to rely on ability to do it all the time because it doesn't always work. And it's another highlight it's an Arsenal throw, Diawara to make Niles Torreira. Edge of the box, he did pop a few in last season, doesn't need to today, finds Sancho, Jadon Sancho gets his second goal of the season, just rolls it into the far corner, comes forward as you like, composure, ability, all that lovely little work up here, you think Torreira's going to shoot it on his left, he just drops it into Sancho and he just, yeah, just guides it into that far post, 3-1 Arsenal and we are cruising. The mill will throw, they get the flick on, the Wobi gets his own flick on but it's back to Meredith. Knocks it into Anderson here as they try to build again from the back, well, from midfield rather. And it's a good spread out here to Chung Yong Lee. I don't know who he is. And Jordovic, despite carrying an injury pretty much since his goal, has gotten the end of it and has put the pressure on. And there are only two shots pretty, pretty much. Obviously, not really, but two highlights have resulted in goals. I mean, it's it. It's, here's where the problem is we don't track that run. And he's allowed to just get his cross in. And with, despite there being three there. He rises and gets the header away and gets the second goal. But we are going to make a change here. Gomez, it's not his day. We're going to bring Goebbels in. 
Um, I would probably bring Rome Gomez in on that role, but he has just done very well when he's come in. Uh, who else do we need? What else? Can we, who else can we bring on? I'm thinking we maybe bring Holding on in the back for Reese Oxford. Um, because he's a bit taller, I think, than Reese Oxford, and he might give us that bit of extra aerial ability in the crossing department. And I think. No, we're going to bring Torreira off for Ramsey. We're going to bring Ramsey on into that box to box role. He's not completely set for it, but I think he's a little bit better than Torreira in the actual role. But Torreira's been very, very good. And Jordovic finally goes off. They're taking a man who's on a hat trick off. He's done the damage though, what he needs to do. Um, hopefully we can hold on here and not give up a, well, 3 1 lead as it was to 4, just dropping deep to try and pull some strings. They're just knocking it around very nicely, playing like we like to play here. To 4, Chingham League. They're playing some nice football. All we need though is just one little, there we go, the little poach into Abamyang. Oh, he shoots over. That would have sealed it, I think. We do have a corner. Jadon Sancho whips it in straight into the arms of the keeper, but he's dropped it. And Abamyang has put it away, and I think that's his hat-trick. Is it his hat-trick? That's two errors from Archer today, actually. And we've got the big screen now. I've never noticed that before. That's quality. Abamyang, yeah, gets it away. I don't think it's... I think it's his second goal of the game. He's getting a lot of braces for us at the moment, but not many hat-tricks. Or no hat-tricks, in actual fact. And as we go into the dying moments of this game now, that is going to be it. Jadon Sancho whips it in, Abamyang. Oh, so close to his hat-trick. But not today, by the looks of it. De four the free kick. Oh, he nearly makes it 4-3 just to put the pressure on. Get it clear. And Abamyang actually with a chance to run at Millwall. Finds the ball out to Goebbels. Can he finish? He doesn't, unfortunately. He hits it straight at the goalkeeper. Don't think there'll be time for the corner. A stupid VR and it's going to wipe out the corner highlight, isn't it? No, it hasn't. Sancho whips it in. Abamyang heads it just wide. That will be that, I think. We've got a whole minute over the allotted time, so yeah, that's the end of the game. So let's go and have a look at everything following that result, where it leaves us. Um, if we go through to, we're going to send the assistant there. Oh, we, we can't. It's just the one question, so it's fine. I'm going to praise Abamyang. Doing that a lot recently. <laughs> he's, he's been absolutely superb for us. 10 in 8 in the league. He's absolutely fantastic. His dribbling's going down, bizarrely. His pace has dropped to 19, from, I think from 20. So he's, yeah, what is he now, 31? Yeah, I mean, that's going to start happening, I suppose. 19 pace is still fine in my book. Uh, we've got players that can come on and bring pace if we need them as well. But we are top. We've played an extra game for Chelsea, who are playing... No, they just beat Huddersfield, so they've got a game in hand still. Uh, Man City... Man City... They're not playing yet. They're, mm, OK, I'm not sure what's going on there. I'm not sure why we've played an extra game than everyone. West Ham doing very well as well. They just played. They have. They're just beaten Wolves. Good result for them. Man United are level on games with us. They are... They drew with Southampton, that's a bad result, okay. I mean, not a bad result, Southampton are doing quite well. And Liverpool, not really going to be threatening anything, even if they win, so not too much to worry about there. Palace need a result desperately, they're only on two points, two draws. West Ham and Southampton, at least it's not us for, for once. We are leading the goals, Abamyang on 10, Gabriel Jesus. I know he's got a hatching point. Oh, look at Lacazette on five, he's doing the work for Everton. And we've got Abamyang and Mkhitaryan on the average rating. We've got Mkhitaryan on the assists. Abamyang on the player of the match. Leno's tied on the clean sheets. No one in the yellow cards, so that's good to see. So let's see if we're going to come back game-wise. I think it depends where I can get through recording at work to a degree. Um, obviously, you've got Chelsea and Man City here. But I'd like to ideally maybe try and go a little bit further than that. And maybe try and get to like West Ham or Stoke, West Brom or Stoke, possibly. Um, Although the, top, the West London, North London, West London, North London derby is always one to consider, so I'm, I might have to see. It depends on, like I mentioned, there's a video coming out or has come out already that suggests this, what's going to be happening with the channel and some adjustments and some things like that. It kind of depends partly on that. So I guess I'll do what I can and I'll come back for where I see fit and where I can get to in a reasonable time. So if you enjoyed today's episode, please do drop a like down below. If you're new to the channel, please drop a sub and all that good stuff. And any comments as well? What do you think of our team? 
you know, can we go in, can we go unbeaten all season? Do you think so far? You'd say we're playing well. Generally, in the games we're not playing well, we're grinding results. So you never know. Um, but let me know your thoughts. Um, who do you think is going to be a standout? The new signings. Who do you think will be a good standout one for us this season as well? Um, but until next time for the next episode, I will see you later. Take care.